Hello everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to make this. This is an asparagus stock launch system. It's uh, pretty simple to make. It's got a little bit of tedium. We're going to scrap it and start again here. <sighs> okay. Now, I've done this a couple of times just because uh, you know, stupid bad habit mistakes that I, I get used to doing. Um, I don't plan on actually putting this thing in orbit. The reason I don't plan on putting this thing in orbit is it's not really needed. I'm going to do a ver as vertical of a launch as I can. Um, yeah, that's what I'm looking for here. Uh, and the reason I'm going to do a vertical launch is I'm trying to show how efficient this thing is at getting you into space. Instead of having 20 stages or so going straight up, you know, and have it all wobbly and all that. Uh, this is going to be a good bit more uh, efficient, stable. Now this looks big, but this is as tall as our rocket is going to be. Well, we'll be once we put this on. Alright, that is the height of the final rocket. This here can probably get you pretty high in the atmosphere. May not have enough fuel to land safely, but who's counting, right? Alright, so, an important thing to have is radial decouplers and fuel lines, external fuel ducts. I'll show you those in a bit. I'm going to put those, six of them. We're going to go to the fuel tanks and just strap on eight of these. Come on. Alright. Yep, that looks pretty good. Let's launch, no, no, we're not going to launch it like that. Put swivel engines on here. The reason we're using swivel engines is because you can steer them. Uh, just be very careful steering this because without the field, the you know strut connectors, space tape, they will bend in and wobble and might collide. So yes, we don't have everything we need to do this completely safely. We need to put nose cones on all of these because that would be a lot of drag otherwise. All right, here in the fuel tanks. You can get the FTX-2 external fuel ducts. This is important. Can I? No. I do this one by one. It is a bit of annoyance, but it's the way it is. Um, the reason for that is if I put this on two, it automatically goes to six. And if you try to edit one of them, it messes all of them up. We're going to connect fuel tank one to fuel tank two. We're going to connect fuel tank 2 to fuel tank 3. We're going to connect fuel tank 3, not to fuel tank 4, but to the center column's fuel tank. Uh, this is much easier to put up with if you have the uh, the radial decouplers that actually have you know struts on them to hold these things a little further away from the ship. So that's just kind of t really difficult to put in there. And we're going to go with these other three, you know, 4 through 6. We're going to put 4 to 5. 5 to 6, and 6 to center. I said we're going to put 6 to center. Okay. <sighs> now, this is very, very close to being done. We need to add two stages right here. We also need to take this engine and drop it down here so that all seven of these engines burn at the same time. We want them burning right from the start. Deselect all of these. Locate fuel tank one. Right here we can highlight the uh, decoupler there and you'll see on the right it highlights that's the second one in that stage. And we need fuel tank four which highlights as the fifth one. So we're going to control click on one and then click on, control click on the second one. We're going to drag the stage five, tank two is the second one, and its brother. No, that is not correct. The third one is tank two. Sorry. Uh, this changes each build. Just depends on 
Which one do you put on first and all that? Which one did you connect? So one and three. We'll put that on stage four. Okay. Now, yes, that means that we're jettisoning two of these at a time. And make sure they are completely opposite of each other. Weight distribution is very, very important. This, uh, yeah, I might go ahead and try to put it in orbit just because vertical launches can be tedious due to the, uh, yeah, this thing's going to wobble a little bit and it'll start falling. And uh, Having a controlled gravity turn is going to help out with that. We'll see what I come up with as we fly this. Put the SAS system on. We're going to max out our throttle. And we're going to launch it. Now the first two tanks are going to drain really quickly. And it looks like we're draining fuel quickly on other tanks. But we're not. No, we are actually quite safe here. Uh, if you watch our fuel gauge here, you'll see that uh, it magically refills. Bam! Now we are much lighter. Our acceleration is going to increase greatly. And the next set of tanks are draining a lot uh, slower. All right. And it looks pretty cool too. And we get these cool little disconnects here. And as quickly as possible. I think I could do a vertical launch straight into deep space with this. Yeah, we're going to send uh, Jebediah Kerman into deep space with this, I believe, just by doing a vertical launch. It's a great way to show how efficient this is. Um, yes, we need higher escape velocity to do so, but, <clears throat> you know, who's counting, right? Uh, now, if you do this with, say, the main sail engines and the big giant, giant red tanks, there is no end to how far away from Kerbin you can get on a single asparagus stage. And blam. All of this fuel still remains. What is our apoapsis? Our apoapsis is already at 150 kilometers. And it's not slowing down. 165 kilometers. All of that on just that tall of a rocket, that quickly, I mean, it's taken us less than two minutes to reach space, doing a straight launch. We have three quarters of the, uh, the center tank here. And look at that, look at that, it's just slowly going down. We have 270 kilometers apoapsis. Still not even half of this down. And then this right here, you can use to you know do your maneuvers through space, do flybys from other planets. If you have a comm set, comm device, you can tell transmit data back to the Kerbin from deep space. We're almost at 400 kilometer apoapsis. Now this was is much easier to steer when you have when it's not super tall and lanky and wobbly and all of that. Uh, and uh, you know you're actually putting all of your extra weight to work, so it's kind of balancing itself out very nicely. Uh, this will continue to increase its distance at a higher rate. As you see, the change in apoapsis is getting faster as we reach higher altitudes just because there's weaker gravity so this amount of thrust is more efficient or more effective or whatever you want to call it let's not argue semantics here uh, that took very little control to actually do uh, I didn't really have to do any corrective burns or anything like that and we're on our final stage. This is our space exploration stage, of course, or re-landing stage, or whatever you want to use it for. And this will get us all the way out of Kerbin's sphere of influence. Bam! And we still have over half a tank left in this one tank here. And that is how far we're at. We will encounter Duna at some point if we leave this thing flying. 
I won't leave it flying because, well, that's just, I don't want to sacrifice Jebediah like that. That's just not my nature. We can, however, go ahead and accelerate this out and see how far out this little bit of fuel can get us. Uh, wow. Six billion. Yeah. And now we are just going to apparently interact with the Mun here. And the Mun's going to launch us out into deep space, probably. And we are out of fuel. Sure, let's go back here. Let's go ahead and jettison that. Okay, now our parachute's deployed. That's going to come in handy in case we run into any atmospheres out here in deep space. Let's accelerate this. Fly toward the moon. Could fly right past the Death Star looking moon there. Okay, what's our final thing going to be? As you can see, our final... <laughs> final trek in this space there is going to be quite the distance away. Yeah. That is, uh, yeah. It, uh, it didn't take long to get there. It, uh, just, that's the best way of maximizing your distance. It's a little bit expen little expensive to build, yes. But it's uh, it's worth it. It is worth the expense. I doubt we're going to see any planets on this flyby. Anyway, that is how you do. Would you like to? Would you like to? Uh... No. Do we have to slow down? Yeah. Okay. Report uh, self. Flying in space high over the sun gives you 10 science on this difficulty. Okay. What does an EVA give you? 16. Hmm. Just uh, let him fly away here. Come on. I guess, uh, Jebediah here doesn't want to be controlled. Is he dead or something? What the hell? Cannot control him whatsoever. I already do that. Uh, maybe I need to research these more astronaut complex to do our better spacewalks and all that. Anyway, that is what a single asparagus stock stage will get you, even carrying some extra fuel. Pretty damn good. So, I hope that was helpful, and I will see you next time. Till then.